Hello everyone, welcome to part 3 of my very detailed Ark Witch Elementalist leveling guide for 317 Siege of the Atlas League. Very importantly, my friends, yes, you will have issues with survivability of your witch if you just try and go ahead out leveling this guide, because obviously I'm not as fast as you are, and only go by what I've given to you in parts 1 and 2. Because there are obviously practically no defensive layers. This is not how I plan to have this build at the end game. We're going to be fixing it as we go along. Now, if you have not watched parts 1 and 2, please, please check the description of the video for the links. They will take you back and, you know, you can fill in all the gaps in case you joined me in this part 3. Now, once again, I do not claim this to be the most efficient or speedrun friendly leveling method. It's just how I level and previous parts of this guide, again, they provide massive further context on this point. Please do not, do not act surprised or complain that nothing makes sense or like you're dying or something else if you didn't even bother watching parts 1 and 2, please. As stated in the previous parts of my build, updates, corrections, clarifications and everything will be added to description. So if you're checking this video fly into the future, Please check the description and if something has changed, if I found something that works better, it will be in description, my friend. With that being said, let's keep leveling our witch. So we start part 3 of this guide around level 45 as Kitava got freed up somewhere at the beginning of Act 5. We are going to try and look for Osuri to find sign of purity. We get it quite easily, I would say, um, you know, and but I would still stay around burning a Rife Square to com complete optional objectives first, well, duh, obviously, before facing Kitava for the first time. So even if you finished Osuri and found Sign of Purity, please don't just go to Kitava, finish optional objectives first, and that is pretty obvious. Around level 46, we will keep working on the Lightning Mastery semicircle, the top semicircle of skill nodes heading towards Breath of Lightning, notable skill. We, as I already said, return to Ruined Square, everything is burning, there are evil mobs everywhere, and we will look for the entrance to Reliquary and the place where Utula is standing, and we need to kill Utula. So we find Reliquary first, at the very least that's what happened to me first, but it doesn't matter, the order doesn't matter. And I love Reliquary map, personally, simply because of how satisfying Ark works and jumps between skeletal mobs. There is just something special in that crackling sounds as they pop, it's fantastic. We reach 47 here and take finally that big notable Breath of Lightning, woohoo! It should feel like a substantial, relatively substantial lightning damage increase for you. From here, I would go towards Golem Commander, notable, as kind of process of further bolstering our defenses. Um, you know, I, I think that process at this stage, around level 47, it can still wait a tiny bit longer and we would like more damage from Golems. Return to the Ruined Square to find and kill Utula. Then, I personally, I personally messed up in this leveling process, so this is a correction, my friends. I couldn't believe it, um, as I've missed one objective in the control block, so at least I didn't speak to you about it in the previous uh, chapter of this guide, in the previous part of this guide, we needed to also find the Lentus Miasmeter, whatever, Miasmeter, whatever that device is, which is a very, very easy extra skill point. It was an optional quest that I missed out. I'm just explicitly pointing it out to you, so you go back, retrace your steps if you have to, and get it done, okay? So I had to go back and get it done, obviously rather easily, but it was a waste of time. You should do it on the way, otherwise, you know, you're retracing your steps. It's not good, not efficient. Once we got Mia's meter and put that extra skill point, continuing to move towards Golem Commander, notable no, notable points, there is kind of nothing left to do here in the Orytha Square, so we would just go up to the Cathedral rooftop, fight through the mobs a little bit, and... Uh, probably ding level 48 around here and fight Kitava for the very first time. Now my friends, if one of his slams hit you and you died, please remember that there is no shame falling to a god, as Sin rightly says so. So 
get up. If Kitaba caught you and just go back in and finish him off, it's fine. Shake it off. Only your ego got hurt. Once Kitaba is dead, you will notice that you massively lost uh, quite a bit of your elemental resistances as aligning with Alira earlier and sort of investing into some other skill points that we have invested into should have compensated for it by then. So I actually didn't drop much below um, 75% percent resistances on elemental resistances after fighting Kitawa at this point. But you need to keep an eye on it. You don't want to run completely naked with no resistances, otherwise you are not even a glass cannon. You're like, I don't know what. All right, so we sail back to Arayath. We sail back to Lion's Eye Watch. This is how Act 6 is starting for us. With level 49, we will get the notable point of Golem Commander, which allows us to have an extra Golem. That's fantastic. And also around this time, I probably would do our very first discovery and kind of very first contract in the Rogue's Harbor, the heist, for the very first time. It's actually a fun little mechanic. It's a fantastic, it was used to be a very fantastic league when it was hot, the hot stuff. So it is a good thing to do in the game. Good to level, good loot, lots of potential currency gains too. So please keep it in mind to go back to Rogue Harbor if you're sick of just the campaign leveling and maybe want to spend a little bit of time there. I reckon that's a time well spent, really. We wouldn't have another golem on us this very second as far as the gem is concerned, unless you bought one beforehand. Good on you if you did. So what I did whenever when I got Golem Commander and didn't have another type of golem on me, I simply summoned two flame golems for now. I personally, as a casual player, still believe that it boosts, it doubles the boost from the damage boost that it gives you. So one flame golem gives you 15%, two flame golems should give you 30%. Please correct me if I'm wrong, because I never claim to be a number cruncher or a pro player. So I'm happy to stand corrected, okay? Correct me here if I'm wrong. But I summoned two flame golems, it was just fun, and just ran with three golems, you know, and that's what I was doing. Uh, lightning golem and two flame golems. We already at that point had cast when damage taken support. We bought it at high gate, if I'm not mistaken. So now I would buy from Lily the Immortal Call which we can't equip yet because we don't have enough strength and we will boost that through skills and manipulation with the gear obviously we would also buy ice golem you know a steel skin as well for semi-passive bleed immunity effect damage over time effects such as bleeds kill us very very quickly and essentially having steel skin makes us bleed immune most of the time, so it's very very good. I would also buy increased duration support, if we can fit it in, if you have an extra slot there. Because when applied to steel skin, it would, uh, you know, increase the duration of positive effects. And quite substantially increase the duration of positive, positive effects, so that's why we need to do that. Just buy those gems and like i said look for opportunity to put them into your gear once you have enough gem slots of the right color and strength now as we move towards level 50 it is time for us to do the hard dash for the left hand side of the skill tree with the end goal being sovereignty notable wheel of of skill points and the reservation mastery why are we doing this because it is critical for us to start ramping up kind of for the moment when the damage will ramp up and we will need to include one extra aura so we will be running with three auras my friends two probably offensive ones and one defensive one but we will see how we go you always can juggle that you will have options once you have done that and that is good having having options is really really good i reached level 50 as i was clearing tidal island where bestel keeps losing his stuff then we go into mud flats where we find Nessa and fry everything with our arc. It should be probably one of the most enjoyable moments of being an arc witch because the damage you are kind of experiencing on you is not that high yet, yet you feel really OP. Or at least I found that around 50 is probably when this build is most enjoyable. We quickly go through Karui Fortress, which isn't much of a fortress if you ask me, and we kill Tukohama. I was even a bit lazy in this footage and I deliberately let you see quite a bit of it. I know we're going fast and I know it's short but uh, and you can't really see but my point is that Val Arc is still working fine in these kind of boss encounters on limited arenas. It's fine, it's fine. At level 51 we keep going towards Reservation Mastery. Past, Safeguard, Keystone. 
which is a great defensive layer in itself, we will come back to it later. You know how I told you about us not yet being there at kind of adding all these defensive layers? Well, this is an example of something we'll be taking just a little later, okay? Right now, our priority is mana reservation. At the very least, my priority was. We go through prison, we kill Chevron and Brutus in prison and keep spending points as we level up, moving through the life and energy shield boosting nodes. Life pool, of course, is important. Energy shield, that, that's all our primary levels of defense. They're important. Around this kind of area, there are a couple of great side quests coming up to kill Aberath and the puppet mistress, both of which will give you skill points. Absolutely don't forget about them. You need to do that. As we reach Riverways, look out for those giant apes again, host chieftains they're called, as they once again will make great specters. If you still have specters in your setup and you would like them to put those extra frenzy charges onto yourself, themselves and your golems, that's great. As you get to Puppet Mistress uh, in the spawning ground inside of Wetlands, watch out for poison damage over time for those pools that she leaves on the ground. Uh, damage over time at this skinny stage of our existence as an arc which uh, damage over time in my experience is the main killer and it eats right through the energy shield from what i can tell you will not have a chance to even call your mama for help honestly and you'll be dead uh, it will only again it will only hurt your pride i don't care at this stage the build is not finished you shouldn't care too much just come back in and finish off the puppet mistress if you died but Learn by doing, learn to avoid or mitigate as much as you can that damage over time. You absolutely need to do that. At level 53, we take the big life node that's called Purity of Flesh, which should make us feel a little better about ourselves. You know, once again, we're too skinny and this kind of gives us a little bit of healthy fat. At level 54, we should be at the Brian King's Reef, ready to wrap this act up as we keep moving towards Preservation Mastery Nodes, I said it enough times. We kill the Brian King, watch out for his slams, he can catch you there as well. So wrap up this act nicely and sail into the sunset to bridge encampment. Around level 56 it is going to be the quest to get Maligaro's map. I would start checking if the next Ascendancy lab of level 55 is available, if you have unlocked all the missing kind of nodes as you do the labyrinth kind of preparation right you will not unlock it until you have used maligaro's map so that is that is going to be the part of the map where i think the final uh, wing of that little labyrinth pre-labyrinth unlock is going to be it should be around this time when we do the labyrinth you know and to get that elements a node that we're coming to so to have full advantage of four golems running with us but at this point in time, you probably will see that Izaro's difficulty will ramp up, maybe even quite substantially. So his slams absolutely will kill you. And only properly built tank characters can actually withstand his slams. So if you die to his slams, it's going to be annoying, but don't be too surprised. Here is how you can mitigate it a little bit. I simply try to aim to kill him before he kills me and I stay on the move. Stay on the move. Use your flame dash. Flame dash around. Do not just stand there and think that you're gonna survive, okay? And also a very simple advice that I already gave you in the previous uh, part of the guide and I'll give it to you again. Try to out-level the labyrinth by 2-3 levels. So if you could enter labyrinth at level 55, go there at level 58. You will feel the difference, it will be much easier and why make your life harder? Two, three levels, you will gain them with Ark very quickly because you clear maps so, so quickly, you rake that experience in. Right now, my friends, you should have enough mana efficiency to fit another aura once you have taken, you know, Reservation Mastery node. If you want more damage, I would add Wrath Aura to your setup and you would have just enough to squeeze that third aura in into your mana pool and still be able to shoot arc almost all the time maybe very occasionally you would need to stop and allow it to regen for like half a second literally if you already start feeling that you are struggling to survive right now there is no shame in that yet because we haven't invested any points into spell block into other into other nodes that we will be paying attention to very very soon i would probably consider using grace for evasion or defiance banner they might help otherwise 
look, there is really no particular trick here. Level up a bit more, start putting points into spell block as I'm about to start doing. But that probably will have to wait for the next part of this guide because we're again out of time, out of budget of time, where I think you'll start getting a bit tired listening to me rant to you. Final things here, my friends, after you got sovereignty and the reservation mastery, we will change our direction and start moving towards enigmatic defense notable as it will give us a little bit more of spell damage yeah quite a bit more 20 percent i think as well as spell block which we will build up into yet another defensive layer i said enough about that but you know it is a step-by-step -step process around level 59 we will take enigmatic defense boosting your spell damage and block and we will be going through Val City, dealing with bunches of spiders. It's also quite enjoyable to be an arc which here, at least I found so. It fries everything. It's very, very satisfying to do to do that. And then we'll kill the biggest spider of them all, Arakali, as we enter Act 8. So this is, my friends, where we are going to wrap up this part of the guide. Part 4 is coming, quite obviously. I'm sorry, it takes a little bit of time. You certainly out-level out level my progress but hopefully it still gives you the right direction please don't be shy never forget to give me a little like so that youtube promotes the video further and i know that i'm doing something right so i dinged level 60 just as i just before i entered sun yet again the start of act 8 finishing the full wheel of skill points boosting my spell block around that enigmatic defense this is where we're going to start restart our journey, uh, continue our journey leveling the witch next time in part number four. In the meantime, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll be speaking to you next time very soon. See you later. Bye for now.